Jadzia's Gach is waiting for Esri in Cargo Bay 2. Norvo has a hangover. And Miles O'Brien is in New Sydney and following some promising leads. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Seventh Rule with Sirach Lofton. Hello, hello. My name is Ryan T. Husk. Today, we're doing a review of Deep Space Nine Season 7, Episode 11, entitled Prodigal Daughter, written by our buddies Bradley Thompson and David Weddle, directed by Victor Lobel. Uh, this was Aaron Eisenberg's birthday, January 6th, 1999. We are joined by a very special guest, Esri Dax herself, Lieutenant Esri Dax, that is, Nicole DeBoer. Don't forget it, Lieutenant. Second episode. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Lieutenant. Hi, guys. Thanks hey. For having me. Hey, Nikki. All right. Uh, before we get started, we do have a very special thanks to give out to John Siegel. Thank you very much for sponsoring this episode, John Siegel. This one is for you. How's everybody doing today? Doing good. Doing good. That's funny because you said John Siegel made me think of a a movie, a book slash John movie called Livingston Siegel. Yes. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I don't know it. Book. You don't know about that book there? It's a book that was turned into a movie. Um, but the author of that book is uh, the author of uh, another book that is one of my favorite books. And that is called uh, Illusions. The oh, Adventures Illusions. Of, Illusions. Yeah. The Adventures so of the Reluctant Messiah. Messiah. Oh yes. my gosh, I was tripping on that stuff when I was a teenager. Wasn't <laughs> yes. it so good? It's yes, so good. it's such a good book. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. It's a very beautiful book. Um, the same author, I think his name is Richard Bach. Yeah. Is the author of that book mm -hmm. as well as Jonathan Livingston Sting, 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 Siegel. Sting, yeah. So yeah, that was a little word play, a little background, but this is book illusions. Every anybody out there listening, you should get the book if you're interested in just having a really good kind of a short book that takes you on a really magical ride, and mm -hmm. it's fun to kind of challenging your thoughts about the world and, and everything else. So, uh, illusions: the adventures of a reluctant messiah. That is a fantastic read, and it will be on my book list when I start a book list. You had me at short read. Yeah, short. I think it's like it's 150 pages. Yeah. yeah. But it's lovely. That's a good recommendation, Sirach. Yeah. I haven't thought about that book for a while, but I loved it. So everybody to Sirach Lofton's book club is coming soon. Stay tuned for more information on that. <laughs> yeah. But be careful. Sirach's pretty intelligent, so he may have some pretty uh, far out books, books about history and culture and things I've never even heard of, like <laughs> Illusions, was it? Illusions, yeah. This is a book about, well, about the adventures of the reluctant Messiah. It's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. And you, you think, oh, the Messiah, it's, it's basically that. So you'll go into the story like, you know, with an open mind. But it does take place in America, I think in Ohio or Indiana. And it's kind of a, it's just a very fun story. Mm -hmm. And um, Richard Bach won my uh, praise when I read that book because I was like, wow, this guy's a great writer. Um, and mm -hmm. he's telling a story through this parable, through this other story. He's telling another story about faith and, and, and belief in yourself and all of these other things. You know who's lacking faith and belief in themselves? Norvo. Oh. Uh, your brother, uh, Esri's brother. Your brother Norvo. Yeah. Or Norvo. Yeah. You know, um, I'm glad you brought that up because that was one thing I wanted to talk to you about, Nicole, because when we had Ira on not too long ago, mm -hmm. we, we talked about this season seven. Mm -hmm. And I think we were about, you know, eight or nine episodes into it. And, and it, I told him, I said, you know what? This season seven feels like it's Nicole's, it's Esri's season. And I feel like she is reintroducing us yeah. to the, the cast that we already know, right? Be, through mm. her eyes, right? It's like, oh, through her eyes, we get to see these very same people we already got to know, but she gets to know them too. And I, and, and he kind of like, 
he, you know, he said, I never thought of it that way, but yes, that's what we were doing. And uh, I wonder for you, you, you know, what was that experience for you? I mean, you're coming into a show, it's already established, and now you're coming in and essentially it's really about you in the beginning of this seventh season. Like I, right away, the first three, four episodes, it's, it's Esri, 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 Esri. And I'm happy with it because it really gives me, like, uh, like I said, an insight on the characters that I already knew, but through your perspective, which I love. Um, but what's that like? Because I've been on uh, guest stars on, on shows that are already in production. I did Seventh Heaven and all this other stuff. And they were already in well into their production. And, you know, you're slightly intimidated because you're like, OK, all these guys, are, <laughs> you know, they're, they already know. I don't even know some of their characters. Right. I don't even yeah, know. Yeah, totally. Do, right. So how was like. How fast did it take you to kind of adjust to that? Um, was that some kind of responsibility you were eager to take on or was there uh, nerves about it? Like. The, the bulk of the episode, not just the first episode, but like literally we're now in the 11th episode. And I would say eight of the 11, nine of the 11 are Esri centric episodes. Yeah. Well, as you say, when you've done, when you do guest stars, uh, guest spots on television shows, which I had done also several of those before I came to this show. Um, it's difficult, right? You come in and, you know, hopefully you like it. Hopefully it's a good guest spot, uh, mm -hmm. which I thought Corvo got in this yeah. one. I remember thinking, oh, he's getting some good stuff for his demo reel. Yeah. <laughs> I remember thinking that um, for Kevin Rom. And he did go on to do a lot of stuff after this. Um, it looked familiar. Yeah. And so it can be really difficult depending on the show. And if you know anything about it is the thing that's really important, too. If you've watched the show, if you know the characters, that's super helpful. You know what I mean? I hadn't specifically watched Deep Space Nine, but I had watched, you know, all of TNG. So, and I, and I was, a, I love Star Trek, you know? So that really helped, even though I felt like, yikes, I didn't watch the series. So, um, and I didn't really have a lot of time to watch it before I, I got cast and I started. But that definitely helped. You know, because I know what types of characters are Star Trek characters. I know what the world is sort of. And I was super eager to be part of that and mm -hmm. felt good about that. Felt like I knew how to be on a Star Trek show. So that helped. Whether I was right or not, I don't know. But that's how I felt. And so it gave me that, that confidence going in. But then there was the aspect of killing off a very loved character. That made me nervous. You know, but what could I do about it? You know, it wasn't it wasn't my fault, and I was super happy to get the job. And everybody was telling me, "Don't worry about it. Just think of this as a new character. Uh, don't stress about that." You know, and and then and then the writing was there, and then it was fun, and then to play with all these different people and these characters and this well oiled machine. I mean, everybody else had you know, has very fully realized characters and been doing it a long time. So that part helped, but it, it was, and then as we started to go along and it was like, I knew this was the final season of the show. They never told me anything about how much I would be in it or whatever, but of course mm -hmm. that makes sense. If you're going to add a character, you want to use them, but I would start to get scared if I saw, if I got the script and I was like, Ooh, it's another Esri episode. Ooh, like, I hope, I hope fans. Like, uh, I'm, I'm all okay. in this episode. <laughs> you know, and like, there's like the, the thing we're going to be wrapping up this show this year, and like, there's a lot of stuff we should be in. Oh, God, it's another one just about me. And, you know, part of me is like, yay, this is great. But part of me was, was scared of any backlash or whatever. You know, I thought, so there were those nerves. But of course, being television you shoot it you don't air it till way down the road you know you don't know at that point you just all you can do is go in and do do the work and do your best work you know and try not to worry about that just worry about what it is you have in front of you and do your best you know so but it wasn't until down the road further that I did realize what a wonderful opportunity this was because I did, like you say, you get this opportunity to 
to learn more about these characters and their how they felt about Jadzia and if they had just killed her off, you know, but it was very smart to to yeah. use Dax. I mean, that's what the whole Dax is about, is having multiple lives. So, of course, it makes sense to have a new Dax um, we brought into the Star Trek world. So, And then a Dax that can come in and, you know, have have everyone on DS9 who cared so much about Jadzia have that way to um, have closure somehow or to just have her back again or, to, like you say, to get to know these these characters that we all love better through 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 Esri and they're missing Jadzia and everything. So I realized that that was actually a real gift and yeah. really special, you know. Yeah, you know, uh, just to, a little bit more about that, but when we were first introduced to the characters in season one, you get to know them, you see how they bounce off each other, which relationships are friendly, which are competitive, Right. or even combative in some ways then Worf shows up in the fourth season and he kind of allows new aspects of characters to come out we see how Odo deals with somebody kind of stepping on his toes and in, in you know in in his perception possibly we see you know how does Kira adjust to this so now fast forward to the seventh season and now we have Esri and so we get, you know, like Sirach was saying, we, we get kind of reintroduced to these characters because we're now seeing an aspect of this character we've never seen, which is how this character responds to not just Esri, the character, but just the idea of a counselor, for example, okay. or right. the idea of an ensign joining, you know, their ranks and, uh, and now Lieutenant Junior Grade. And so it's really interesting to see how each character reacts to this new character it's like it's breathing new life into each one of them and i was really excited to see the two of you you and o'brien together because this is how deep space nine creates these relationships the best they have two people on an away mission or one person on a mission the other person goes to save them or you know o'brien is stuck in a jail cell in cardassia and o odo goes to bail him out or whatever it is and I just kind of wish we had gotten to see more of the Miles and Esri show. Me too. Me too. That's what I, that's yeah. when, when I saw them together, I wanted to see the two of you and how your relationship with each other worked out, how you bounced off each other. And we didn't quite get to see as much as I would have liked, but what do you remember of that, Nikki, of the relationship between you and Colm or... Or when you first mm -hmm. saw the script, it, you know, did you feel like it was lacking or was it just fun working with them or what was it like? Well, so this was one where I felt a like, concern, like, OK, wow, this is going to be not this is off the station. This is going to Esri's home. Um, so I was a little nervous about it. I'd heard about it. You know, hey, we're going to do the next episode. You're going to go home and there's a murder. And so I thought, oh, OK, that's kind of cool. I'm going to mm -hmm. help with that, help solve a murder. Um, but then what it was, was, I mean, I kind of feel like I'd love to take this episode. Like, I feel like there's a few different episodes in this that could have been um, like, I remember reading it and kind of going, who's Bilby and who's Bilby's wife? Yeah. And that I was just confused. And, about. and, and I watched the Bilby episode and I was saying that. Yeah. <laughs> I I, 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 I I watched Bill B. I, I don't remember what exactly who Bill B was, but as I was saying, I was like, well, what, what was Bill B about? And I don't remember it that clearly. And yeah. it kind of, I was kind of thrown off too by that same kind of re referring to something that was not in, in continuity. It was like, that happened like three seasons ago or something. You know what I mean? It was hard for me to like, what was, when was Bill B? Right. <laughs> And then, you know, I like when murder mysteries, like you're learning something about that person that died or the people who were connected to that person. That wasn't really what was happening here. So, you know, it was kind of strange. I loved that I got to work with Colm because I love and we got to hang out more. And I think through that, we became better friends and stuff. And so that was a major plus. 
Um, but then the opportunity to, I feel like there's a missed opportunity. I would rather it just be as, you know, Esri and Miles go and solve like a real mystery together, you know, and have lots of us together. That would have been a cool thing to do. I would have really loved that. And then as far as a family one, um, because listen, it's, it's always fine to do a slow piece, a slower moving piece about family dynamics and Certainly, you want to understand what where Esri was coming from and before she was joined. So it's nice to go and learn about that. But then that should maybe without a murder or I don't know what else it would have been. But gosh, you take away the murder, then there's, then less there's no stakes. Conflict. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's no stakes. And I think this episode maybe struggled a little with the conflict and, and just direction a little bit. Um, I believe it was... It was put together quickly because there was another episode that was going to be made and it got tossed out. So, oh, really? Maybe didn't have as much time and as many passes. Uh, I think, I think that's what happened with this episode. Um, I know that Ira Bear did apologize to me for this episode at one point. <laughs> wow, um, I've never heard of a writer apologize to an wow. actor. <laughs> it, yeah, it, yeah, it had its flaws for sure, which is too well, bad. But there know, was some. Yeah, go ahead. No, I I, I totally agree with you, um, and and Ryan. I think that the best thing of this, the best part of this episode, was the pairing of O'Brien and yeah. Esri. That was the thing that was, and that, what I really liked about it was O'Brien was kind of suspicious of you, right? I think yeah. he was like, he thought you were in on something. Like he was like, yeah, you don't know about this. You don't know that your mom is your, you know, your brother or whatever it was. Right. He, he kind of had a little bit of suspicion. I liked the fact that you guys were, you were like, I don't know anything. You were you're like, what the hell? I don't know. Anything. Yeah. I just figured this out. I'm just finding out like you are. So right. there was a good like chemistry there between the two of you. I love that. And um, I think they tried to squeeze way too much backstory about your mom being abusive and mean and yeah. it didn't need to be there. And uh, it, you know, it would have been better had maybe your brother been like a police detective who was helping investigate the crime. That way the three of y'all are working together right. trying to crack the code or something to that nature. I don't, I don't think the whole, my brother did that. I, I don't think it was necessary for the mother being, you know, an abusive mother and the whole extra backstory. The other thing that I would say why I think Ivor would reasonably apologize to you for is they brought in a whole new group of people. A whole new people. Th this is like, well, this that's is the no, tough no, part, I was yeah. like, who is, who for, like, there's five new people on this, on this episode. It was like yeah, I walked into it. set that day and I was like on a whole other show. I was like, yeah. okay, none of these people are normally on this show. Like, yeah, this is like a whole other. It feels just like a whole other show. You well, know, there oh, lies the pressure because then it becomes the Esri show. So suddenly, right, right. you are which the focus of everybody's which is even attention. Even hard though. to do for somebody who's been a, a regular for five seasons, for example. Yeah. And I'll give you an example of that. When uh, Bashir had to do that episode, I think statistical probabilities with all exactly. those other people. Those other people. It wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't that good because you it have because you have five other cast members yeah. that nobody it was knows. The same but thing. It's yeah. the same thing. It's hard to carry an episode with all new people that nobody's ever seen before, and it's like it's brand new, and the storyline doesn't move it that. You're great not in your time. uniform. Yes. You know, you're not. Starfleet, you're not you're dressed in like these Lucy baggy things that yes. are not and you're at home with these new people who who are you people? <laughs> really? I mean, so it all yeah. feels weird. It all feels kind of strange. Mm. Really. I, I feel like they tried to squeeze stuff too much stuff in here, try to give Esri more backstory. And we don't really need that much Esri backstory because Dax's backstory isn't is like that's Ten right. lifetimes worth of backstory already. So it, it felt like they were adding backstory where it didn't need to be. Um, I do think that the the whole murder mystery might have been better. I, I wanted to know more about the Orion Syndicate. They they kind that's of teased what I'm me. Saying. Yeah, they teased tough. me with that, but they didn't go into it. They didn't. It was like they were just there, kind of in the background. And then right I, away she was dead. Right, right away you find yeah 
um, O'Brien, and he's like, oh, she's dead. And we're like, oh, she's dead already. Okay, so. So what are we doing here? <laughs> <laughs> like, and so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but listen, I had a great time with Calm. We had a great time together. So that was good. And I'm glad. Well, you can tell. You yeah. can tell when you see the chemistry between yeah. the two of you. It's just like. And you know what I was watching? I was just looking at the, um, so Victor Lobel directed this episode. Yeah. And uh, I look back at the episodes they did, Who Mourns for Mourn? And he just did In the Pale Moonlight, which was like fantastic. Wow. And, uh, that was Victor Lobel as well? That was Victor Lobel. And, um, but even in the oh. Pale moon, even in the Pale Moonlight, it is a slow slow story that unfolds I love it just that. it just makes sense right it's but slow, it's the characters but, we already know but that's but it right i mean this is slow you know. with characters i don't know and that the, i mean pace wise you know what i mean there's no action in this, this is all conversation all conversation so yeah. the pace of it is very kind of deliberate and slow and but they're with people we don't know and i'm like no. i don't know your brother i don't know this your mom's character and even though they were great actors, yeah. it's out of, like you said, there's no Starfleet uniforms. Yeah. There's no uh, oh. conflict that we're aware of. Like, this is a brand new part of space that we don't even know. It's not like it's not like we're on the Bajoran homeworld where we have backstory on Bajorans and stuff. I don't right. know where they were. It was like some new Sydney. I was thinking right. of Sydney, Australia. I was like, oh, they're in Sydney, Australia. No, it's in like the Denoris Belt or something. They said something with some... Yeah. some sector or something so there was nothing i could even <laughs> system like attach my mind to this is not even a place that i've seen before it's not even sydney hey. australia you know no. what i mean like i would be good with that <laughs> it well, was just like everything was it was too hey this is a new place and a new universe and a, and these are her new family that we'll just never, you've never seen um i would have liked to know more about how they went through their trill uh initiation and stuff because you know i was like oh wow everybody has well they a didn't have here. symbionts i don't think did they i don't know well, they, they, they had the spots well the spots no, no. are on all on all trail yeah. they weren't joined esri was the only one who was joined it's oh, almost okay. like they didn't they didn't even they weren't even proud of me that i was like right bad that's why mom was kind of judgy with you about that it was a bad thing to them mm -hmm. i yeah no pleasing that woman um she was lovely, though. I will say, uh, what's her name? Lee, Lee Taylor Young. I remember when I told my mom, she was really excited because she's like, oh, I loved her on Peyton Place. There was a 1960s series called Peyton Place, which had like Mia Farrow, Ryan O'Neill. I think Lee Taylor Young married Ryan O'Neill for a period. Um, so my mom was excited about that. I was like, oh, and she was a lovely, lovely woman. I remember I would come in to set and she'd already be talking to Victor and just kind of going I just don't understand why she would and then she kept saying I just want to hug you and she's just so awful and she was always trying to talk about her she was I don't know it seemed like she was not struggling that's not the right word but she was having issues with maybe some of the writing or some I don't know what it was but it always come in and she was talking to Victor and saying I don't know yeah, she's that's probably like, "What's my motivation here? Yeah. I don't get it. What's what? What's well? You know what why it is. Am is I why am I angry all the time? Yeah, it yeah. seems <laughs> like it seems like maybe the actress was sweeter in disposition than the character yeah. was. Oh, so yeah. sweet, so, so sweet. Uh, maybe that's Lovely where that what what was tough about it. Yeah, I think that's what's tough because I remember her saying, "I just want to embrace you." And she's so awful, and I'm so sorry. <laughs> and I'm like, that's okay. I understand. It's okay. And then, yeah, doing the scenes with. Uh, Norvo, Kevin, I literally felt like I was in a different show or I don't know, like a pilot for another show. And I was like, is this, is he the star of this show? I don't know what's going on. He's great. I think that this is his scene. And yeah, oh, he's going to get some really good material for his demo reel for this scene. Yeah. <laughs> but I was like, I don't really know what this is for me. I don't really get it. I'm so sorry. I just, I didn't really get, but I wasn't going to say anything because I was just so thrilled to be on this show, you know, but I was like, I'm not sure I understand this episode. Mm. <laughs> you <laughs> well, you never, you never know. Sometimes in Star Trek, when you have a, an episode like this, things pay off 
in subsequent episodes. That's true. That but is true. midway through the final season, <laughs> you have a lot less of an opportunity of that happening. You right. got like 14 yeah. episodes left in the whole so series. So is there going to be a payoff for that? Probably not. Eh, maybe yeah. not. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I, yeah, there was a, your, your mom delivered a line that I thought was like, it reminded me of my mom and everybody else's mom. Right. When she walks up and she says, I hate your hair. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, and she's yeah. Just basically like everybody's like, hey, your hair's short. And you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. And your mom just walks up. It's like my mom, you know, you you think you look cool. And your mom's like, yeah. uh, or you look like an idiot with that shirt. Totally. <laughs> Moms don't sugarcoat. No, no, they go right to the cutting you down. And I thought that was great for her as far as delivering that because she cut, yeah. she cut, she cut you down. like some poop. good family dynamic stuff that people can relate to, you know, or feeling yes. like it's not always uh, enough, like nothing you do is good enough. And, and that's all interesting stuff to talk, talk about and look at, but it just felt disjointed from then the murder, the murder thing, mystery. I don't know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it just didn't, it didn't flow well. I was like, how come, you know, there was another thing. How come O'Brien is always off on a, like, wasn't he in jail? No. So that I, we can see him doing... wearing cool threads. That's right. We can see him in a nice little button shirt that's a weird color. He's always off just randomly doing, oh, O'Brien is uh, like, what? Um, and this was another one of those, but he's And he's best year is waiting, waiting for him yeah. to come back. <laughs> I love that yeah. stuff. You know. mm. Yeah, waiting at the airlock, looking looking at the passengers as they exit the plane. You know, like, know, that was so sad. Where is he? <laughs> this poor guy. He's probably holding poor welcome guy. home balloons. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, we'll tell you what, you know, guys. Bashir's got a hollow sweet program that's just uh, a version of of uh, uh, O'Brien. Yeah, where they're playing know? darts. They're just playing darts. <laughs> And then he makes yeah. O'Brien like and a little bit const- worse. He's just constantly complimenting him. Yeah. You're really good there, doctor. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> hey, guys. So we do have to run to our break very quickly. Uh, Nikki, I think I think this is it uh, for you with us for this particular episode. But we do want to thank you very much for joining us. I know we've got a lot more to talk about with this episode and a lot more. Ciroc yeah. and I love to be like, you know what they should have done? Hey, do it. <laughs> we got a, we got a lot more of that and a lot more of actually really good things uh things that i enjoyed because there's always gonna be good things in every episode oh i did like i did like some of the esri things in there again about her identity or even gender i think was in that one it might have been pronouns yes i threw yeah. back the covers and i don't know which which sex i'm gonna pronouns. be there. you mentioned that pronouns that was so funny more when pronouns. you said more when you pronouns. said I don't know what what gender I am until I pull back the covers. That's and they, right. They did a shot, a, a reaction shot on your mom that killed me. She just went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, oh. oh <laughs> she's already kind of that. against it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, but um, thanks, guys. And uh, hopefully I'll see you guys again. Absolutely. We'd love to bring you back. Love to bring you okay. back on a better episode than this. Because we got to talk and give you praise that you deserve for this season. You've been killing it this season. So oh, thank you. Thank you, Nicole. You Thanks. say a better episode than this, but after the break, I'm going to prove to you this is one of the best episodes, not just oh. of Deep Space Nine, but oh, of wow. Star Trek ever. Stay tuned. Okay. All right. Anyway, <laughs> thanks very much, Nikki. We really appreciate Thank your you. time. As always, can't wait to see you again real soon. Thank you, Nikki. And everybody at home, stick around. We'll be right back on the seventh rule so fast. <laughs> 